love to welcome to my show today. I have Andy from the band Code. Welcome, Andy. Hey, Barney, how's it going? Nice to speak to you again. <laughs> uh, it's all good, man. It's all good. Uh, thank you for doing this. Um, but like, I think before we start, we kn we've known each other for many, many years. Like, uh, I was uh, friends with your, I still am friends with your younger brother um, back in, in uh, secondary school, I think it was. Trying to think back. Yes, it, was it must be going back to at least that mid or early nineties, right? Early nineties, yeah. surely. Yeah, round about there. Round about there. I think it was like yeah. 13, 14 years old. So it's around about there. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, to start with, like, I've I've sort of been, I've had a bit of a retrospective look at things recently and all that kind of stuff, and looking back at my musical influences, and you play a very big part in that. Um, just purely because when I when I met Matt um, and and I was into, I mean I had my sort of like Iron Maiden and and Guns and Roses type thing and uh, I was very much into kind of like indie rock at the time as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then going to your 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 parents' house um, and hanging out with you guys and listening to the music you listen to, you got me into like Deftones and Corn and stuff like that, and really started that movement for me um on there which has gone on to be kind of like a lifelong fan of those particular bands um and others i mean there was a lot more obscure stuff that you kind of got me into the more black metal stuff especially with uh likes of rob and stuff into that as well mm -hmm. um and yeah no because i was given this thing of like uh the the four at 14 type album thing and um yeah i was just sort of it made best, best four albums when you're 14 is that yes um, yeah what, what did you pick? Um, I think it was, uh, I think I picked Soundgarden, Super Unknown. Oh, yeah. Sensor, um, Stacked Up. Stacked Up, uh, yeah. Stone Temple Pilots. Uh, mm -hmm. And shit, what was the other one? I can't remember what the other one was. That's really bad. Um, no, I can't remember what it was. Go on. <laughs> i'm sure i've got the picture on my phone somewhere um because yeah. like, a guy like in one of the radio shows on on total rock um basically asked me because he was doing a like thing on all the sort of presenters so i am looking through my phone here that's why i'm looking down um, yeah. <laughs> um and no it just got me thinking back to then and and it was it was like it was groups like you guys were listening to um i was corn's first album should have should have known that um, oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, corn by corn. Um, <laughs> what, year that, what year does that make that? 90... 94. Oh, 94. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, um, and yeah, no, it just, it just got me back to then. And I was just like, you know, I, you know, a lot of my musical sort of like the start of that movement, at least to you guys. Um, Cause you, I mean, I can see by the music collection on your wall right there. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never stopped. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um and and mine's all in boxes behind me underneath this like desk here that's my turntables still got them there all right um, yeah nice yep yeah, uh, i like to keep them in the background at least uh and, um but no i was just like yeah just i obviously gives me a chance to say thank you for that like just just having that like prowess around those bands at the time and and uh yeah no it's just um i i was interviewing uh the guy from uh will haven yesterday in fact and he's obviously yes. they're very much like in the deftone where well, they're from the same place as deftones and stuff and you know and it just led from that so my ticket to go see deftones i saw um like they well, played on their first tour or something didn't they yeah yeah so i saw will haven and it kind of led from there um and yeah so it's just it, like again it just keeps coming back like to those moments and stuff mm. like that. so but yeah so thank you initially on that. yeah no, no worries yeah yeah i'm sure we shared some stuff back in the time as well there's a lot of um i don't know if that you were involved with that electronic stuff at all around that time or that was probably more rob and matt maybe but yeah no yeah, it was um, a big big melting pot wasn't it it was i think jilted generation came out that year or around that year oh, okay uh, yes yes um, and uh obviously stacked up by sensor they had that electronic sort of edge to mm -hmm. as well so it kind of crossed over um but yeah no it's like there's a lot of a lot of music from back then that 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 i mean i still listen to now i still follow the bands that still exist now um mm. you know and they're, they're still i mean obviously you know deftones core cool, all that's still around um 
uh, so the prodigy to a certain degree and you know just all that all that lot and then uh, you know um, continuing on <laughs> and keeping yeah, going exactly so yeah but yeah, yeah. they're good times weren't they definitely definitely it was a lot of time spent in your guy's house yeah. uh, <laughs> um, um and yeah and uh yeah no it's all good i occasionally see matt still obviously when we're not in lockdown um mm. i still see him around and stuff obviously uh I'm yeah, I, obviously i credit a lot of my um actually making music thanks to him anyway because he was way ahead of me in terms of making he was making a lot of electronic music in Soundforge that program yep. and it was him that, that um showed me that it was possible to record I don't know what you want to call it more acoustic mu music or elect you know non electronic music in that way which wasn't the best way of doing it but at least showed it was possible so yeah. it was him showing me how he made music which made me start to do my first demos and everything so yeah it was, it was him that started that off for me yeah the recording side of things and writing myself yeah they're all from this little hub in 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 the town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And how it's taken us around the world now. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's crazy. And obviously, you know, you now you're over in New Zealand, um, mm -hmm. which is awesome. And uh, yeah, this is I think the second second person I've ever interviewed from that area of the world. Um, so it's nice and early here, where it's evening there with you. Oh, it's perfect time. I appreciate you getting up in the morning that, on oh, a Sunday, especially. My goodness, it's all right. It's all right. I'm usually up. The kids. I mean, during the week, I'm up early anyway to get the kids to school. Um, mm -hmm. How our lives have changed, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and like waking up early on a Sunday isn't like you know. Some days I've got work on a Sunday, so it's it's mm -hmm. it depends on you know on that. But I was up at I think about half six anyway, so Oof. it works for me. It's all right. I've got my coffee right here as well so yeah. I'm good i'm yeah. good <laughs> but yeah no i had a band called devil skin on um i think sometime last year uh, and they're sort of a known band within in new zealand I think, I think they're quite big here i i must confess i've never heard their music but i've seen their name around a lot yeah they've 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 managed to like tour across the world and stuff with various big mm -hmm. bands um and yeah i think they're they i'm, I'm guessing they are i don't know the new zealand scene so um, i would have thought they were relatively big in that sort yeah, of yeah they're, they're uh, i think they do well here they they sell out some quite big um you know uh venues and that sort of thing so yeah yeah they've got quite a following here yeah uh, really nice guys as well like um yeah really like they're really eager to get like the interview done and all that kind of stuff and they made it work like there and i think it was like midnight there and in the end of the day when we did it so um, um but yeah no it's, it's quite cool so thank you for doing this as well because there's obviously a time difference and it's always fun so um, pleasure cool well let's let's get chatting about your band we've kind of mm. reminisced a little bit there caught up <laughs> well kind of um and it's, it's been it's been a while since we're actually seeing each other but you've got uh your band code um you're about to release an album uh it's actually coming out on friday isn't it as we're recording this yes it is um, it is yeah so this will probably go out after so everyone who's listening to this or whatever go 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 fucking listen to the album um, <laughs> um you're uh nice enough to send me a link to listen to the whole thing so listen to the two singles that you released or two concentration songs um you released uh rat king and uh the mad white hair Mm -hmm. um that mad white hair track is fucking epic like <laughs> what is it Tr clocking almost 12 minutes i think it is it, it is it is and we we um it wasn't the the choice of our first choice to put out as a um a first song but um the label and they they ran it past some of their distributors and they said that's the one to put out and so we we sort of um taking that um that um impartial view of it said okay let's give it a go and i think it was a good it was a good choice in the end because um you know, it's always a bit of a bit of an ask to get people to sit down and listen, take 12 minutes of their life to listen to a, um, a, a song, especially if they haven't heard the band. But um, it does show the more, um, I, I guess, uh, there's quite a few songs on the album which are quite um, maybe a bit more traditional, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, done, done in around four and a half minutes and Rat King yeah. similar, similar to that. But Mad White Hair is a bit of a um, bit of an anomaly, definitely. So... <laughs> 
hopefully got people's attention a little bit. I think it did well, actually. Yeah. No, that's really cool. I mean, it was really cool. I was like, when I was listening to it, I didn't quite clock it was like that long when I initially hit play. Um, and it just kind of, it just like kind of kept going. It was really good. Um, it doesn't feel like that kind of like epic length, if you feel. Um, mm. Some songs that can kind of go on and on and on. And you kind of feel that going on and on. Uh, whereas this one, it really kind of just sort of, the, the, the it flew by. Um, if oh, that's, that's nice to hear. Yeah. So it's, it's an interesting uh, one to write as well, actually, because um, it started from, there's a little quiet bit in the middle of the song, which has got sort of guitar and a radio sort of a old radio sort of sound. Yeah. And that's the bit I wrote in the first place. And I kind of, kind of like that line and then wrote back backwards and forwards from there. So it's from that middle that it started and, and, and keep adding things until it sort of makes sense. And you put it all together and before you know it, it's 12 minutes long. So it's as long as it needs to be, I think. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. You know, when you, I mean, obviously from writing music myself, you kind of know when, you know, you could go for the straight verse, chorus, verse, chorus, three and a half minutes, done. That's the sort of standard thing that people look for. But, you know, mm -hmm. when you're writing a song and you're really into, you know, what you're building, it, you kind of know when it's done, but you know when it's like, you know, it doesn't matter if it's like 12 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes long. It's, yeah. you get to that exactly. point. You know, like, just like, Some of the best songs are really, really long. I, yeah. I like to do as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. There's some great ones out there. More recent, I think uh, Soilwork had one. I don't know if you managed mm. to block that one off I there. I heard that one, no. No, The Wisp of the Atlantic, I think the album's called, uh, or it's an EP, but they've got like a 15-minute long track on that. It's really good. It kind of goes across the board um, to their kind of like melodic strengths and also like heavy parts, and, and then they throw in some like random brass instruments and stuff like yeah. that so <laughs> it kind of goes on but it was a it was a good track it was a good track but um mm -hmm. yeah definitely um so with with the album uh, we haven't even named it yet the fly bone prince um mm. and and what is this album number oh, five. five 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 yeah um, crazy um and how did you guys get this one together because obviously you're over in New Zealand right now like is it was it all remote kind of recording like a lot of bands were doing over sort of lockdown sort of half and half so to be honest we've worked in this sort of way for a long time anyway but even back to our our second album was done in in sections but um I, I am terrible at writing music with other people in the room so I always um you know build the songs and create demos on my own because I'm I'm terrible at, at anything else really that's just what I'm used to creature of habit and then send the, the demos around to the other guys and they embellish their parts you know there's obviously there's no vocals on it because that's not my area either the people write the different parts and then what we try to do is to get together for um key parts of the recording so the drums were recorded in england not the christmas just gone but the one before that okay and um yeah and we got together to do some things there in preparation so we get got our um you know our promo photos and that sort of thing done and recorded the drums and then we were going to continue on that afterwards and then um by the time it got to you know march or whatever the world went a bit silly anyway and um um did the rest of it remotely so um um did all the guitars and the drums all guitars bass separately and the vocals were done separately as well and then all pulled together in the mix in the end and um yeah so it's really just the beginning that was done with us together and the rest of it was done remotely kind of like a um a virtue rather than making a virtue out of a bad situation really so yeah not, yeah. not the ideal way of doing things but um but with yeah, you know, with the distance and the lack of lack of travel is the only way we could do it. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely. A lot of bands had to learn on the fly during this whole thing. So and was... like I said, actually, we've done the similar thing in the past. So with our all the way back to our second album, the drums were recorded separately, yeah. guitars were done separately, vocals were done separately, and then we pulled it all together in the mix. So all the way back to, you know, about twelve years ago, whatever we've been doing the, the similar yeah. thing. No, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, it's it's nice to sort of like have that already kind of set because a lot of bands, like I said, had to learn how to do yeah. that. Yeah. So used to have being in that room, uh, being in that studio, and then you know they've ended up buying various bits of tech to 
to record this stuff and and you know and and it's it's been i mean from my side of things i'm i'm on the sort of like i work for a tech company so it i see the sort of uptake in in that and the questions that have come in um mm. regarding that and everything so uh, it's been quite quite good my expertise of kind of kind of coming to coming to play quite a lot which is good and obviously having this podcast as well has helped um a lot of bands get their uh uh like voices out there if you will mm. and yeah probably- and that, the benefit was because we've done it before i didn't have to learn anything so yeah. no, it that's- wasn't stuff scratch <laughs> that's, good. that's good um so what are you guys like obviously with the album coming out um on on friday and and i like one track i really like by the way is scold's bridal um oh yeah 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 no i was just i just want to throw out there because i've got I've got that written down with a little star next to it um, <laughs> um but it's a great album I, I implore everyone to go listen to it on that front um but what are your guys sort of like uh plans ahead because obviously i know travel's restricted and everything at the moment but was there or is there plans to sort of like you know go out on a small run of dates like if you're coming back to the uk for a little bit or yeah if, if, i, I tried of... to come back yeah try to come back at least once a year in in normal life and every time when we do come back we do something whether it's recording or do a run of gigs or something like that um um we did some um a few years back around England and then um yeah so we'd like to do something similar to that whenever that come whenever it happens I can come back again then um we'll arrange it so we get some gigs hopefully somewhere some a few on mainland Europe would be nice as well so we haven't been there for quite a while now quite a while probably you know six or seven years maybe six years I think it was the last time we were uh, um somewhere other than England playing England or Scotland so that'd be nice but um yeah definitely a few gigs and if something comes up where um there's a bit more of a tour opportunity you know I, I think we'll be happy to take a little bit of time off work and give that a go if we can so yeah, yeah. so what's the like obviously are, are the rest of the guys based over here yeah they're all based in the uh, um yeah um Hazelmere Woking that sort of area so oh, they're all local not far away at all yeah all <laughs> that's pretty cool. local yeah yeah no so i'd like just sort of like it's it's sort of because i've known like uh various like musicians they all live in different countries and they've all managed to kind of you know get it together but it's usually like europe so where it's a bit more accessible to get obviously your on the other side of the, of the yeah yeah um, I, I, i'm frequently apologizing to the other guys in the band definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i mean how how is this sort of like i mean How's the music scene over there actually? Like obviously we mentioned Devil Skin earlier, but um what like the sort of like music that obviously you make um is the sort of like um I would say is it is it black metal or yeah, that's, that's close enough. Yeah, that's that's I mean, what that, I would say it is. Yeah. You know, not to not to pigeonhole, obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you have to. Uh, to give people an idea of what they're listening to. Um, but what's that sort of scene like over in New Zealand? How's that like influenced you in any way or anything like that? Or you know, if you manage- um, I, I think there's a reasonably health, healthy scene here. Um, 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 there's a few, there's a few black metal bands around. There's some more down in Wellington as well. I think um, um, I haven't listened to t- too much since I've been here. The, the the gigs I've been to generally have been um, when touring bands have come along and I've gone to see them. Mm. And so um, you know, Bitry came here and at the gates and. Um, yeah, a couple of hours. My sugar was really good as well when they came here. But um, um, yeah, there's there's some good, there's some good local bands. Um, I haven't really got my feet into how in, into the local area really because um, it took me ages to be honest to do the same in England. So you, you know, it's like growing up in Farnham. There's not a lot around, especially in the kind of music that I, that, um, I was really into at the time as well. So yeah. um, you know, death black metal. There was I don't know anyone else that did that sort of thing. So. It was only when um took years and years before um actually started to pull together some kind of lineup. And in fact, in fact, our first lineup in our in the band was um 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 the vocalist was in London and then it was just us two really that made the music together mm. and we didn't have anyone else in the band. Um, um so we ended up pulling on our various contacts and then in that time it ends up being um 
another friend of mine, then two other two Norwegians we've got in the band. And then from then we've like swapped various other um people from various other places in Europe. And it was a while back when we thought, no, we, uh, well, I, probably I thought when various people left that it'd be really good to be all local so that we could, you know, um, rehearse regularly yeah. and and get get tight as a unit. Because at some of our early gigs, um, when, for example, we'd have a problem with our drummer and we'd get a new drummer in to play a gig, there was one time when, um, so we played Brutal Assault in Czech Republic and mm-hmm. The day before the gig was the first time we'd met the drummer oh, God. and so we had you know absolutely no rehearsal we sort of in in the in the meeting room in the meeting room in the um um hotel room we sort of got together and played through the songs on, on, a, on a on a on a little stereo and worked out how it was going to work and then the next day with no rehearsals we played in front of a few thousand people or something and it was kind of interesting to do but it was way too nerve-wracking and you didn't know what was going to happen from the second you started and so uh, the idea of getting us all together where we could rehearse um every week and get get used to get used to the way we we work and 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 be tight as a live band yeah um and so that's what we did And, and the good thing is now now we've put all that hard work in with these guys who all live close 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 by and we work well together and go away for a year and come back in one rehearsal and we're kind of like I've never been away sort of thing because we know how it all works and yeah so putting that work in helped no that's good that's good yeah no it's something I mean you do get some musicians that can like literally drop in and out but there's obviously if you're not used to that kind of side of things it is very um you fight way yeah, yeah and I should say that the drummer who did it was was incredible and he played everything perfectly and um but it's just and and I think we did okay but it's that level of unknown and uncertainty because you don't because yeah. it, it even though someone's playing the same materials on the CD that um there's certain flourishes or someone might speed up or slow down slightly in the in a fill which the other the person before didn't and before you know it you're very slightly out yeah and it's that that tightness that you need to have there, and um, yeah, every yeah, add, add the human element into it, and the slight variations, and for you, and add into that as well, terrible one stage sound sometimes, and <laughs> it's, yes. it, it shortens your life a bit. Yeah, as it does. I I remember those sort of situations well. I mean, we had a bit of a rotating lineup in in uh, Zero Cipher for a little bit. Mm. It was mainly drummers <laughs> um, and a bass. Right. Theory. probably one of the most important parts right yeah because yeah. everyone's banking on that yeah you kind of like whereas before you kind of had a rapport with the other ones where you know you know their moves so you know mm. they like if, if if they do tend to speed up or slow down in some parts or whatever and and you kind of you know their groove and then you get someone completely new and you just don't there's that element of doubt that's kind of stopping you from being and then you end up making the mistake yeah <laughs> um, because you're anticipating something that's not coming um exactly. and that's the greatest thing so we've worked with the band for, for a long time so our drummer now he's um he's been with us um yeah over 10 years now or something and 100 percent reliable i know exactly what's going on behind me and i and i don't need to worry about it at all as long as i can hear kick and snare yeah i'm happy i know he's not going to make a mistake the whole time and it's going to be perfect so Brilliant. And that, that means, like you say, you can concentrate on your own thing. And um, yeah, and yeah, if you do make a mistake, then it's on you and not on someone else. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You can't, you can't throw that at someone else. No. Uh, <laughs> as much as we want to. Uh, exactly. You know, you know, you want to blame someone else, but it's uh yeah, it doesn't doesn't quite pan out that way. But um, no, that's really cool. I mean, having having that kind of tight unit as well, and obviously with you being away from them as well and, and that kind of stuff, but um obviously once you guys are back uh or once you're back over here for a little bit and then you get some shows i'll, I'll pop along because i'm back in obviously back in oh, good to see you, man. yeah it'll be good Definitely. to see you as well because it's it's uh it has been it's been a long time like um i kind of remember like it must it's got to be like 10 15 years at it's got to be 10 or something years must be yeah so but um no we all moved around and everything and well i'm back yeah. in, in the sort of that area now i'm in i'm in i'm in camberley so 
Oh, not, there you go. Not far, yeah. Not too far. Um, and I'm sort of settling myself into like when when the clubs are open, I'm still DJing, so mm. doing all that kind of stuff. Is the ad's still going. It is. It is. Oh, wow. <laughs> I did. I did a live stream from there last month. Nice. Uh, yeah. No, me and me and DJ Brad um he's still going um and yeah we did um the the schism night that i do uh on mm-hmm. the thing we did we're doing live streams while the clubs are closed um and uh yeah we just decided to do it from the edge because brad hadn't done one um and we wanted to get him involved because he's involved with schism as well and we're, we're dj over in guildford and stuff and uh yeah no we just set it up there and me and him did um a couple of sets uh which was really cool um, oh, and it, that's great. You know, it's the same music. Don't worry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the same five tunes. It's uh, you know, and a bit of pop punk thrown in. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's no, it's really it's it's good when you you know, it's it's something I miss dearly at the moment because it's been over a year, and mm. um, you know, it's just that kind of like as much as live streaming has been good, like it's been fun, but it's not. It's just not the same. Um, no. Yeah, but I've got like like we've I've been working with um Total Rock to sort of get uh live streaming gigs and stuff going. Mm. Uh, we've been doing that like behind the scenes. We've managed, I think we're getting our first one out in a couple of weeks. But we, yeah, we're doing stuff like that just to sort of like help the live scene back on again because there's a lot of people mm. who won't come out, but I still want to see shows. Um and you know, it seems to be a, a thing because we don't know where this pandemic is going to go from here because obviously it's looking good like with the vaccines and whatnot but you know there's all these variants that keep coming up <laughs> um, that keep yeah. like rearing their head and then and then we're sort of like is this going to happen and and uh, i don't know i'm hoping it's hard to plan it's really hard to plan isn't it well, that's, um, that's the thing that we're having it's just sort of i can't you know we can book something but it's just sort of is it going to happen and I won't know keep doing the right thing and we'll get there in the end yeah exactly I mean I've had both my jabs now so you know I'm a, I'm on that path so it's uh yeah you know it's just sort of I feel a lot better for doing it um mm. if I can go out and, and especially with my work I'm interacting with the public in general so it's it's sort of trying to keep uh you know that confidence going that that, that they're going to do the right thing we're going to do the right thing I've done this you know, yeah. <laughs> so if people do it, then it will tip it in the right direction. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. And they're running pilots and stuff at the moment. I think Download just announced a, a, a mini festival for a couple of weeks' time. Oh, um, nice. They've done a, it's like an all British lineup, obviously, but they've got a three day, 10,000 capacity at Donington Park um, festival. Oh, wow. They're doing, and um, it's a government pilot. So, um it's camping only you're not allowed to leave the premises while you're there mm. but they're going to keep it monitored obviously testing and all that kind of stuff but um yeah they've got like um enter shikari bullet for my valentine and frank carter and the rattlesnakes i think they're the headliners mm. and there's just a whole host of british bands um mm. like on there which is it's kind of cool it's like what bloodstock are doing to be fair um, they're replacing kind of all the international acts with with British bands and like some some European bands that should be able to travel as well. So, um, but hopefully, I mean, Bloodstock yeah. looks like it's going People ahead. Should still support it, I think, won't they? Even if they're not the, the um, international bands you might normally get, at least it's something after a year. Yeah, no, um, I think that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, and and Bloodstock have been going like full sort of you know health or leather type of thing on their promotion and everything like they're going ahead full capacity um which is going to be interesting like if that if bold that move. yeah it's a very bold move and and but I, you know it's it's I, I hope it works <laughs> i hope it works yeah yeah um okay. but you know all these pilots and stuff hopefully this will this will kind of like open up um a lot more for us which will be good yeah. um like I say, especially in the nightclubs, I'm really missing that. <laughs> DJing in my in my little garage here. This is where we're in my garage. Um, yeah. You know, there's only so far that can take me um, without a virtual crowd. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if you just like with no context, just had the camera running with no sound, it would look very odd. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
but we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, no, I've got a couple of couple of questions left for you, Andy. If uh, mm -hmm. that's all right, sort of just sort of like to capture some of your sort of like um, I don't know, I guess influences on on that front. But um, what I want to know is because I normally end these shows with like you know what are your sort of like most pivotal albums, like your mm -hmm. top three most pivotal albums. But I've kind of changed it because it kind of turned into like the best of list. Um, but what I want to get is is basically honourable mentions outside, say, your top 10. Um, so, like, you've got your top 10 albums of all time. You know, it's, most people, it's like, you know, GNR, ACDC, Metallica, you know, all that, you know, Megadeth, all that kind of stuff. But outside that is what I'm interested in. So what are your kind of, like, honourable mentions outside your, like, top 10 albums? Oh, that's tough, isn't it? Um, um probably um in, in the black metal world there's there's like you say there's the really obvious ones that a lot of people that, uh, yeah or a lot of people pick because of you know how how good they are obviously but there's so much a bit less known that i really really enjoy so there was a norwegian band called fist who yeah. released one album in i think it was 94 yeah. single album and it's yeah it's really really amazing pure norwegian black metal nice. really undersung and um it's been re-released a couple of times but that, that's definitely one of them i think um probably all should to definitely mention um fed view and gender another norwegian black metal band that um the guy um uh, guitarist from that band was in our uh, in code for for a while playing bass did amazing work and that was a really really influential album as well nice. and um really influential um de or demo should i say in particular and um i was really into that before i knew knew the guy and then when he when he offered to join it was an amazing amazing thing for me personally because of how much i i worship that demo listen to it and listen to it and listen to it so mm. yeah and then um, it's, um, probably death metal wise, because I think death metal was my thing before black metal. So we're talking sort of like 91, 92, that sort yeah. of time. And there was um, some really good albums around that time, which are a bit uh, slightly less known, well known than the Cannibal Corpse and all those sort of things. So um, Demigod's album, Slumber of Sullen Eyes was an, uh, was an amazing one. And and also bridging the gap kind of between the two, but they're on their own. But um a band Finnish band called Unholy. I was okay. still am massively, massively into really, really innovative and crazy doom black metal that only a fin Finnish band could come up with who who were, you know, live in the middle of the nowhere. It's absolutely amazing their stuff. So their their demo and their first album were killer for me. Yeah. Nice nice yeah no so I, like when i was living in um tampa like the sort of like obviously it's a home of like a death metal like kind of contingent of bands yeah, yeah. Uh, horror sound and all that sort of thing yeah and it was like it was kind of cool like just sort of having that bit of heritage there because they still have like small shows with those bands like some of the ones that never really kind of came out of there but were massive within the city um but yeah no that's that scene's still there as well like outside of like the european kind of like um european run of bands that that like obviously norway and generally scandinavia um have that run um but yeah no just like a lot of um i'm just trying to think who i saw over there speaking uh, of morris sound though another good underrated one is exorder's first album slaughter in the vatican that they recorded yeah. there They're from new orleans that band are but um yeah their first album is brutal as all hell it doesn't get it's kind of like a lot of people say it's um I, I, the band that made pantera turn from the hair metal band into the groove metal band they turned into do no. how much that's true i don't know but that that album is just yeah yeah no that's um, I'm, I'm gonna go and listen try and find some of these and listen to them because it's why i ask these questions so i'm going back and listen to these these like albums yeah. that i haven't heard or or haven't heard in a long time um mm. but no that's really cool that's um no it's a good like good good bunch of bands there and it's sort of you know it's always good like occasionally i do get my kind of like feel for that side of the metal side of things like i just want something that's just sort of like gets stripped back and very raw like sounding generally there's like a traditional sound to these things but it's sort of it's nice to go away from the very much overproduced and and uh like 
clean sounding if you go yeah it, it is and um there, there's there's something to be said for really badly recorded demos mm. from from bands who are really new and just just recorded their first stuff where they got that passion there yeah so it's such a cliche to say you know you like the band's demo more than anything else but <laughs> that really rough and ready recorded in a garage vibe um and that you know uncynical production of music is just yeah uh, can be amazing yeah i can it can i love listening to demos and just like you say listening and hearing that because it's like it's it's unfiltered at that point mm. um you know you kind of it's, it's what they're doing and it's what they're enjoying to obviously doing um and then over time obviously bands learn or they get people that have production techniques that kind of clean things up a bit but yeah just capturing that band in its essence those demos are uh essential for that so <laughs> definitely, are, definitely are. and especially in the black mm. metal death metal world they're kind of they're as important as the albums are a lot lots of times and they're really held in high regard and getting pressed on vinyl and all these sort of things yeah so, yeah yeah that's one thing that's always eluded me is getting my music pressed on vinyl one day one oh, day. yeah <laughs> yeah, one day it's a cool thing it really is yeah yeah i know i'll, I'll probably break down and cry when that happens <laughs> um but yeah just like owning all these like records and stuff and like i oh, just like one day one day my artwork is going to be that big one day i'm going to be pressed literally onto this piece of piece of plastic um <laughs> i do remember when we got our first one back it was a really really special moment that was because um you know we got the cd done but especially back then um cds were what everyone wanted that's before vinyl took yeah. off again and so we sort of had to get the label to allow us to get the license to get a small label to do it for us whereas now every album comes on vinyl as well yeah. but back then you sort of try a bit more and so to finally get it and then um yeah that ritual putting it on the record player but it's your own music is yeah that's that's a special moment one day one day one day, one day. Yeah. <laughs> it's the 20th anniversary of my of zero cipher's first album next year so we'll see um <laughs> are you gonna do some gigs or anything with that no no we've got no plans at all um i mean to be honest i've not spoken to them for ages so mm. not that anything like there's no bad blood between it's just that life is just like take goes on yeah go, taking us all in different directions so um but no 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 plans no one's mentioned anything um so you know you never know i mean there might be an opportunity somewhere a lot of bands are doing these 20th anniversary stuff so we'll see how yeah. that goes um but yeah i don't know if we we're big enough to do that to warrant that at all but um oh yeah yeah who, who knows the, the who knows, like, knows? you know stuff and there yeah. could be someone in behind the scenes that grew up listening to us and now working for some fucking promoter or something so <laughs> <laughs> that's the dream um <laughs> um but um, finally, Andy, what what are your um, what are your hobbies away from music? Um, like, so when you're not doing well, all the other stuff because you've got various projects when it comes to music. Um, yeah, I I've, I spend way too much time on music. Basically, it doesn't leave a lot. So that's that's making and um, collecting and all those sort of things. Yeah. Um, I, I do I do play still play a lot of basketball, which I've been doing okay, since cool. I was a. You probably remember playing basketball around our place okay. as well. So yeah, still do that, trying to keep myself active. Um, yeah, body slowly failing, but um, that's one one big thing I do. And um, yeah, films and that sort of thing I like as well. Yeah, yeah but um, but but I've got I've got to be honest music one form or another takes up pretty much all my spare time yeah yeah fair enough yeah. fair enough are you still doing any of your sort of like climbing or anything like that because i know you were into that for a little bit i went back into doing that and um i probably weigh about um probably about 20 or 25 kilos more than i did and oh, i ended up pulling something in my arm because you know my body's completely different to how it was when i was in my early 20s when i was rake thin yeah. and everything so <laughs> I, I decided no i can't do that anymore um yeah oh, <laughs> oh that's sad uh, yeah. <laughs> but no cool thank you for that um yeah um that's it man um that's all awesome. my like line of questioning if you will on that front but uh no thank you for doing this good luck with the album and everything um i hope it does well in uh when it comes out yeah uh, thanks it's been good to speak to you it's been kind of like a step 
back in time, isn't it? Yeah, a little so, bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>